your little storm knock out the power? Well, excuse me for not noticing. Hate to disappoint you, old man Winter. Better luck next time. If the power goes out, your Generac standby generator goes on, automatically. Down trees? Flash floods? Is that all you've got? Stand up to the threat of outages with Generac, and never feel powerless.
All right, Gary, you ready? Welcome, race fans, to the Domino's TYJ Racing Renegade Dirt Series Summer Nationals, sponsored by Cross Continent Racing. In the booth, I'm joined by my good friend, Gary Sexton. How you doing tonight, Gary? I'm doing great, Robert. Ready for some more Sunday Night Dirt action here at USA Speedway. Times are looking fast. Times are looking familiar. We got Derek Walker up front again, so looking to see if these guys can capitalize on, on some opportunities and get around them tonight. Yeah, I appreciate that, Gary. Yeah, I hope everybody has had a great weekend. I hope everybody has a great 4th of July coming up on Tuesday. This is race number eight out of a 10-race mini-series, uh, Gary and fans. Again, fans, thanks for being here. We're going to go over the details of how you can win that free, large, three-topping Domino's pizza in just a few minutes. Uh, the main thing is you want to get your picks in after this first race. This first race, fans, and Gary is the B main. Uh, the A main will uh, be starting shortly when this one's over. Obviously, you'll be able to get a lot of ideas on who the fast drivers are uh, during this B main as they're uh, getting qualified underway right now. So we'll give you the details on that free pizza giveaway shortly. Uh, Gary, tell us a little bit about Cross Continent Racing, if you don't mind, and or if you've got any track facts on this USA International track. Yeah, Robert, we uh, here at Cross Continent Racing, um, it's a, it's my race team that uh, I run with uh, William Davis and Joe Johnson. We, uh, we compete in all the other Domino's uh, TYJ series. Um, from the dead defender trucks to the xfinity series to the top shelf and then we also compete um in the official races here on i racing and we're just uh, a, a team of, of guys that like the race clean and want to uh, uh get you know get to the end of all the races and get there as fast as possible and we keep growing our uh our racing abilities to as we as we work together and we're always looking to add guys that are that are kind of in the same mentality on here on i racing um, as far as track goes tonight, again, this is a uh, it's a real it's a real track that's actually non operational anymore. But uh, I racing threw some dirt on it when they when they released the dirt content. It's got real long, long straightaways and nice long corners. It's the biggest uh, track we race on. It's three quarters of a mile, real high speeds, a um, little bit longer lap times than we're used to. But it uh, should make for some interesting. Uh, passing opportunities you know with some, some big slide jobs with these little long straightaways and tight corners going into them um i look, look for that to be exciting yeah thanks a lot there gary and i think now we're going to take a second and go over the standings here this is race number eight of ten like i mentioned so these guys have got three races to get as many points as they can do you by chance have those standings gary i do and uh so with three races to go the battle's tightening up here we had derek walker missing the first couple uh races of the season but that after his five race winning streak he's moved himself up in the second behind scott sanderson with 288 points has scott sanderson and seconds derek walker closing in with 266. Nice. ryan hill is uh 255. In fourth is thomas conheady fifth is william davis sixth is buzz moore seventh is uh ray richard Judd Danielson is in eighth, Vernon Markheim is ninth, and rounding out your top ten in points is Jeremy Crandall. Hey, thanks a lot there, Gary. Looks like this qualifying is almost over. We've got pretty much everybody has taken a time except for one or two drivers. Right now it looks like Derek Walker. Uh, same names, different places. As a good friend of mine said the other night on the broadcast, Derek Walker does have the pole position right now as it stands with a 19.774. Followed by Scott Sanderson, who's also, he's actually leading our points, like Gary just mentioned. He's at a 19.904. I was looking at the points earlier, Gary, and it looks like Scott's got about a 22-point advantage. Uh, even if Derek wins out these final three races, if Scott can come in second, I think Scott might have the championship. What do you think? Yeah, it's going to it's gonna be close for sure. I, I think Scott Sanderson's going to have to have uh, pretty much a perfect last three races um assuming Derek win, wins out the rest of the season um i know these guys really have been working hard to find a way to get to get around them but i think that if they do uh, if they don't find a way around Derek, they're gonna have to almost scott's gonna almost have a perfect uh, rest of the season and finish second a few of these times to, to pick up that championship but that 20, that 22 point cushion is is good going into the last and three races. Any questions for me? Yeah, thank you so much. Also, fans, I want to make sure you know uh, 
These races are broadcast live on All Pro Broadcasting. Uh, if you are watching, we do appreciate it. We want to make sure you click that subscribe button. Uh, that way you get the alerts for all of our races well, fans, which are bottom. Wednesday night, Thursday night. And Sunday night at 8:50 p.m. Eastern. Each of those nights, uh, Gary and fans, you do have that opportunity to win the free large pizza. Uh, Gary Whitmire's uh, wife, Becky, was the free winner from Thursday night. Uh, she sent me a picture. I've got it on my Facebook post uh, earlier in the week. Really I think I posted it uh, Saturday afternoon. Robert Graham McFarland on Facebook. If you want to see that pick, so make sure you get your picks in tonight in the second race, the A main. And uh, obviously, as these guys are gridding up, Gary, why don't you go over how they line up tonight? Yeah, so uh, tonight's grid, we're going to have Derek Walker starting on the pole. In second, we're going to have Scott Sanderson. Judd Danielson with a really good qualifying run for the B main is going to start third. Ryan Hill is going to start fourth. Jeremy Crandall's fifth. William Davis is going to start sixth. Thomas Conheady in seventh. Colin Bowden's going to uh, yeah. start eighth. Rolling off ninth is Ronald Klein. Rounding out your top ten is going to be William Roberts Jr. Ivan Garcia is going to start 11th. Vernon Markheim is going to start 12th. I don't know and Russ Coe is going to start 13th. Thanks, Gary. Uh, this is going to be a pretty exciting race. These drivers know each other. They have been racing uh, together here for about seven races so far. And so they should put on a great show. Yeah, Robert. These guys have been racing around each other all season, like you said. So they're used to their driving styles by now. And this short season, they're gonna they're gonna run it hard. They're gonna run uh, they're gonna run each other a lot cleaner than we're used to seeing. But uh, look for the challenge tonight to be get how to get around Derek Walker. He's got he gets these great jumps on restarts. I think that's been a, a big key to him uh, getting out and getting these big leads. He gets these really big jumps. It's hard to close the gap in on him. So as the track changes, uh, look look for these guys to find a new line to try to get around him. That is exactly what they've got to do. And it looks like these guys start getting rolling off here. I think they only get one lap before the um, before the checker. I mean, for the green flag here, Gary. Yeah, I, I think they still make it to. Um, I believe they did last time we were here. They got two laps. But the pace laps here are a, lot, a little bit longer because the track is a little bit bigger. So, yeah. Um, Two or one, I know these guys are ready to go anyway, so it'll, uh, the longer they have to drive behind the truck, the, uh, the more the intensity is going to rise, so these guys are ready to go, they're ready to, 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 to get racing, I'm excited, I'm ready, I'm ready to see what these guys can do. As they, uh, round turn three and four here. They're going to come around and get the uh, one to go. Derek Walker pulls into the pits. This is interesting. I think he's going to, you know, this race, this is the B main. So, uh, it looks like Derek wants to see what happens if he gets stuck back in traffic. And, and I'm hearing the radio chatter. He uh, pulled up. Yeah, he pulled up next to the uh, pace car and got a 15-second penalty. This is really interesting. Um, uh, so now it's going to put Judd Danielson on the pole as uh, Derek Walker has to serve a penalty um, for 15 seconds. So this is going to make the B main interesting as Judd's going to get his first first place start uh, here in the Dirt Renegade Series. And the uh, USA Speedways, the guys make their way around turn three and four in the cross continent. Summer Nationals are about to get underway. Judd Danielson's going to lead him down to the field and gets a good really jump great. on Scott Sanderson. As they head down to the down to the turn one, the Scott Sanderson's on the inside of Judd Danielson. Judd Danielson trying to block, but he can't. Scott Sanderson with a nice slide job to get up in front of Judd Danielson. Yeah, so far it looks like uh, Derek has got another 15 second penalty. Uh, he's going to try to get that cleared as best he can. Yeah, I don't think it's going to hurt him too much. Maybe it will in the B main, but he's going to come back out and learn from whatever happened to get him those penalties here uh, and, and, and not have that happen again in the A main. So look for Derek to be a factor when it counts tonight. But right now in the B main, it's all Scott Sanderson followed by Judd Danison. 
looks like Ryan Hill is in third with William Davis in fourth, and William Roberts Jr. is going to round out your top five. Yeah, I tell you what, Judd is not letting Scott uh, Sanderson get away. And right behind Judd, we do have Ryan A. Hill in that number 55 in the third position. These guys look like uh, Gary tonight. They're all running that higher line. Yeah, it looks like the uh, you know from the last time we we're here, the track's a little bit more uh, slick, a little more a little bit more dry. So these guys are using the high line to get that run. As you see, Ryan Hill's on the bottom, but Judd Danielson just gets the run and powers off down the back stretches. Ryan Hill's going to try to dive it back in, look for a slide job here. Ryan Hill gets a little too sideways on the bottom. You can see that real dark patch around the bottom. It's real slick there, and he's going to lose a lot of time as Will Davis now drops to the inside of Ryan Hill, and uh, he's going to look to try to complete the passes. Will really dives it in there, pulls up right next to him down the back stretch. Look for him to take it all the way to the bottom and, and pull a slide job here. He's going to slide up for Ryan Hills. We got a lap car, looks like Ivan Garcia. They barely get by him there. And uh, Ryan Hill still holding on to on the third place, but Will Davis is trying everything he can. And he, oh, and he gets up in the ride, gives him a little bit of bump. And uh, that's going to bring out the caution. Yes, that was a. Uh, those guys were racing side by side, and uh, Ryan is uh, with his team trying to get this car back up on all four wheels. He's able to do that, and uh, he's going to get going again. It looks like yeah, the Will, Will Davis in that number eleven. I think he's racing in tonight, and uh, the fifty-five Ryan Hill just got together. Yeah, that's a that, that's a tough break there. Sometimes you have to. Uh, that's what you have to do to get by, guys. Is you got to power. You make a power move to get by on the bottom, and uh, not always uh, can't always do it uh, completely clean. You know these these cars are real hard to see out of, and uh, you know Will's just doing what he has to do. Ryan wasn't giving up his spot. And Ryan Davis ends up on his lid. Yeah, it looks like that's going to take uh, the 55 out of this race right now. See, these guys are definitely um, getting some serious practice for the A main. It's coming up here in just a few minutes, fans. we still got a, a good, what, 11 minutes left here. I mean, excuse me, 11 laps left in this one. They're going to get lined up again, and we'll see if Judd can get around Scott Sanderson. Yeah, we still have uh, 18 laps to go, so uh, lots of time left here. It's the B main. These guys are. It's really just a, a, a exhibition heat, you know, for bragging rights. So, no harm, no foul on these ones. I think uh, look for these guys to learn uh, what they're doing and take that into the A main. Exactly. The uh, track conditions are going to be a little bit different in the A main. So these guys are definitely going to try to figure out what they can learn here. They'll definitely learn how the other drivers are driving, and uh, the track conditions will be similar. I'll let you take this restart. Yeah, as the uh, pace car is going to look to pull in right here, Judd Dick, or, uh, Scott Sanders to uh, get the jump here as they uh, head down the back stretch. Yeah, like you said, this is a longer uh, straightaway uh, track than uh, we've been racing on at Eldora, uh, but it definitely teaches these guys. Yeah, it really you really have to hold the car stable down the straightaways because these cars want to pull to the left. So it, getting down the straights is actually a little bit harder here than getting around the corner. So Scott Green Sanderson flag, gets on the flag. gets on the pedal, gets a big jump on the field. Not the best start for Judd Danielson. He's got a uh, mirror full of Will Davis. Will Davis is going to put it to the outside, but Judd's going to slide up in front of him. But, uh, Will's going to get a run down the back stretch. Judd, Judd Danielson is going to give Will Davis a little bit of room on the top side. I look for uh, Will to get a good run here. Oh, but right, caution's out. Yes, fans, give us just a second or two. We'll get that pulled up real quick. See exactly what happened and who was involved in that one. Looks like uh, Vernon Margheim in the number 33 had a little incident there. I think he hit the wall. Caution came out. Yeah, it looks like Vernon got a little bit. Uh, squirrely coming off the corner a little bit loose started pushing up towards the track uh, once once you start drifting up to, to the right you know you can get on the wheel but since you're on dirt you're going to slide right up into the wall and it just comes up from the bottom slides up into the wall once that back that gas tank hits the back of the wall your car's kind of long for the ride fortunately he doesn't get it tipped over he just kind of tank slaps the wall loops it around and uh, should be able to continue continue on uh, with little to no damage 
Well, one thing for sure, Gary, this is definitely going to give Judd Danielson. It's also going to give Will Davis in that number 11. Even William Roberts Jr., that monster uh, sponsored uh, Sprint 360 in the number 12. As well as Thomas Conhead. He hadn't talked about them much. Ronald Klein in the 74. It's good to see him in the race tonight. Give these guys a chance to get a better restart here. And hopefully get around Scott Sanderson. Uh, that would really be interesting to see how they're going to handle this restart. Yeah, I know this isn't a track a lot of these guys run on all the time when they're practicing for dirt because it's not, you know, it's not the, the glorious Eldora, you know, the, the Williams Groves. A lot of guys don't come here, so I think as as the night goes on and the more restarts I get under their belt, they're going to figure out, you know, where the green flag gets thrown and try to time that because right now Scott Sanderson's kind of in control of all that, but if you're, you know, you're close enough to his back bumper, and you know he's kind of holding the field down and he's not going right away. You could try to get on the pedal a little bit a little bit sooner just so that when he gets on it, you're still right there on his back bumper. But uh, weighing back doesn't, you know, we, we don't, it's against the rules here in Domino's, but it also doesn't really help in the dirt series because if, if you get too big of a run, you're going to end up getting black flagged anyway. So you got you to gotta try to, you know, they, these guys play games with each other. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a chess match to come into these restarts. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. It looks like the pace trick is pulling off. And Scott Sanderson is waiting, waiting. Now he goes. Green flag, green flag. And Judd Danielson is right behind him. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, Judd was doing exactly what I was talking about. He's trying to stay real close to his bumper. But uh, Judd just waited a little bit too long to go. I think I think next time, if they have another restart, we're going to see Judd uh, have a bit, little bit better of a restart. But you can see just that little bit of delay allows Scott Sanderson to get way out in front. But the top three are pretty spread out pretty evenly as Scott Sanderson starts to pull away a little bit from Judd Danielson but uh, Will Davis has a, uh, a mirror full of uh, William Roberts Jr. Exactly, I was just looking at that uh, actually the uh, 20 of Colin Bowden has moved up into that um, the position right behind Will Davis it looks like he was trying to make the pass on the low line and Will Davis is all over the back of Judd Danielson as they're going into the corner here it'll be interesting to see which line is going to prevail and if either one of them can catch the 193 of Scott Sanderson yeah, now Judd Danielson's got Will Davis all over the back bumper of him as Will Davis is going to try to make this pass on, on Judd. These guys are always racing hard no matter where they are on the track. They always seem to be next to each other. Nice hard racing, but uh, Will Davis is, is, is having a hard time getting getting around Judd. But I think, uh, you know, if, if Judd makes one little mistake, Will's going to be there to, to, to capitalize on second and then look for him to set his sights on uh, Scott Sanderson. As we got about eight and a half laps to go, eight laps now at the line. Yes, sir. It looks like Scott Sanderson, it's his race to lose. Of course, he can make a mistake in any one of these corners. Uh, Judd loses a little bit of time there as Will Davis gets to run to the outside of Judd. Almost to the outside. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to clear it. Yeah, well, go ahead. Yeah, it looks like Ivan Garcia in that number 72. Yeah. Had a little... Go ahead, Robert. Go ahead. Yeah, it looks like I had a little issue. Got up into the wall there coming out of the corner. Uh, spun his car around, and that definitely is what pulled out the caution. Single spin incident. Yeah, it looked like Ivan was experimenting uh, with running up, up above the cushion, you know, where the line, where the real dark part of the track is. He, he wanted to try to see if he had any extra grip up there and uh, got a little bit too far over it. Once you get over it, your car kind of just sits on top of all those big chunks of mud and up into the wall, hits the right rear back tire on its side, flips it over. Wild ride for Ivan, but uh, look for him not to do that again in the A-Main. Um, the uh, top side of the track is, is a good place to be if you just get one of those tires in there. If you get the whole tire car over top of the cushion, you're going to go for a ride. Yeah, that's exactly what will happen. Obviously, Gary, you are an expert uh, at this dirt racing. I am not even a novice. I've done a few laps in these cars. And it is not my forte. I'm not a whole lot better on asphalt, but I enjoy uh, racing and you know, I'm racing on the asphalt tracks in the asphalt cars, which uh, is coming up on Wednesday night. We're having our trucks, Den Defender Truck Series at Kentucky. And Thursday night fans, you do not want to miss it. It's our first race this year on a road course. We have got the uh, Premier Xfinity cars at Watkins Glen for 50 laps. We are going to have stages, and it's going to be really, really exciting to see how the uh, drivers use strategy to get a win there. Yeah, Robert, I'm really looking forward to the races this week uh, on the asphalt side of it. Watkins Glen is definitely one of my stronger 
uh, racetracks, so I'm looking for uh, cross continent racing to have a, have a good uh, good week this week. I love Kentucky too. I finished uh, second in the uh, Xfinity series there. So enough about that. We're racing dirt. I had a chance to race with these guys last week, uh, just to get a feel for how these guys drive it. The competition is hard. These races are not easy. So I I, I know the struggle these guys feel trying to get around around guys it's it's really difficult and you gotta have to pat these guys on the back for the for the effort they give as the uh pace truck pulls off the track look for judd to get a better restart here and he flag, gets a flag. little bit better restart this time but he he second guessed himself by getting onto the pedal uh, a little bit before scott but judd with a big run and will davis with a big run to the bottom of the track but he can't quite slide up in front of judd as uh, Scott Sanderson, he's got he's going to come around and get three laps to go. Uh, Judd Danison's closing in a little bit on him, but uh, it seems like Scott Sanderson just gets a really, really, really good run off the corners, uh, better than I've seen anybody tonight do. So, yeah, it looks like Will Davis is trying to get a great run, and behind Will, we have William Roberts Jr. in that Monster Energy uh, number 12 in fourth place, trying to make up some positions. He loses a little bit of time there. <clears throat> it looks like Thomas Conheady in that number seven is on his outside. It looks like the Georgia sponsored car. This is a side-by-side -side race here. As uh, it looks like Tom Conheady does get around him. Yeah, that's uh, William Davis on the outside of uh, William Roberts Jr. Yeah, my bad. Yep, that's okay, Robert. And uh, that's the the Owens Well uh, service. Sounds like your trading paints might need to be refreshed. I know uh, Will Davis is from Georgia as they come around to get the uh, white flag. They're closing in on the back of Judd Danis and maybe one of them will be a, have a little aggressive move going in, into turn three and four. Scott Sanderson's going to come around and win the B main. Uh, Judd Danis is going to finish second. William Davis is going to finish third. Uh, William Roberts Jr. in fourth. And rounding out your top fifth or top five is going to be uh, it looks like Colin Bowden. Yeah, according sorry. to my screen here, it looks like Thomas Conheady might have finished fifth. Yeah, sorry about that. Rusco six, seventh, Ronald Klein, Ivan Garcia eighth, Colin Bound there ninth, Vernon Margot tenth, Ryan Hill eleventh, Derek Walker twelfth, Jeremy Crandall thirteenth. And fans, uh, due to time, we're going to uh, go straight to our second server, which will be the A main. We're going to have a quick couple of minute uh, break. That's a chance for you to get some more popcorn, some more sweet tea, Diet Mountain Dew, adult beverage, whatever you're drinking tonight. Get another glass of milk for the kids. And we'll see you back here in two or three minutes. Again, you are watching the Domino CYJ Racing Renegade Dirt Series Summer National, sponsored by Cross Continent Racing and hosted by all pro broadcasting fans. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Green flag waves. The race new turns one and two. Garrett Pittman with the lead. Battle for the second spot. Shane Stewart to the top of the racetrack. Joey Saltana down low. Saltana trips by Stewart. Right underneath. Garrett Pittman with the open lap. Jump to Saltana in second. Shane Stewart in third. Fourth now belongs to Jason Johnson. Donnie Schatz in fifth. David Crowell to the inside of Paul McMahon makes the move out of turn at number two. That's the pass for the seventh spot. Approach the halfway point of the 2016 Napa Wildcat shootout at USA Raceway. Garrett Pittman is looking to drop the green flag. Joey Saldana has stayed right there with him. Shane Stewart and now Jason Johnson and Donnie Schatz closing as Pittman is having trouble getting by with the 20 of Rick Wilson. Halfway this far, 15 down and 15 to go. Top three knows the tail of the end of turn one. Pittman looks again to the outside and makes the move by Greg Wilson. Gives himself a bit of an advantage there now. Joey Saldana has to go to the top in three and four. They negotiate the slow line. He does so very quickly. Jacob Allen, Logan Schuhart, battle for position, right in front of now the top four, and now it's to Taylor on top four. Stewart all over, so oh, Pittman nearly got in trouble. There's trouble, Logan Schuhart gets by, but Jacob Allen's on the pace. Jacob Allen slowed in front two, but we stay green. He's not pulling to the infield, we'll stay under green flag conditions. Garrett Pittman leading it, Tony Sold on the second, that allowed Bobby Shots to get third, and Brad Speed forced Shane Stewart back to fifth. Really had to get out of the gas to avoid contact with Jacob Allen. Now Stewart back to the outside of Brad Sweet. Meanwhile, Shots looks to the inside of Joey Saldana for the second spot. Can't make it happen. Four laps to go at USA Raceway. Pittman to the inside of the slower car of Logan Sheehart. With two laps to go, barring something really unforeseen, Pittman's got this one worked 
now, but now shots for all that were Joey Saldana for second. Shots to the outside in three and four. Joey Saldana and Tony Shots side by side of the way. Five shots take second as they cross the line. Back straight away for the final time for the great clips number nine. Make it two wins in a row for the 2013 Series Champion. Garrett Pittman wins in Tucson. Tony Shots finishes second and Joey Saldana in third. Pittman climbing out and headed up top. World of Outlaws Craftsman Sprint Car Series winner of the Napa Auto Parts Wildcat Shootout. For full race results, series news, and features, visit worldofoutlaws.com. And for extended on-demand race coverage, visit dirtvision.com. You're watching all pro broadcasting with Freedom Trail. Welcome back, race fans. Thanks for being patient during that quick break. Hopefully you're ready for this A-Main, which is going to be super exciting. We're going to be racing 40 laps here. Uh, these guys are back on the track. Uh, a whole new set of track conditions. Uh, Gary, it looks like uh, Scott Sanderson right now has got the fastest time in practice with Judd Danielson right behind him. Looking to see if uh, Derek Walker will put up a faster time he's got now. Right now he's running an eighth fastest in practice with the 19992. What do you think, Gary? You think he's just kind of chilling out right now, saving it for qualifying? Yeah, I think he's saving it for qualifying. I saw him. Uh, I saw him go out there on the track, and he actually hit the wall a little bit, flipped it over. I think he said, "All right, that's it. I know I can get around this place fast." He's not having the best of luck though on track tonight. Um, Judd Danison's impressive. He's put up some quick times, but Scott Sanderson blister of a lap of 19.3 two tenths faster than anyone else um but yeah as far as Derek Walker goes I think he's he's just sitting in his pit box right now waiting for qualifying to start go, probably going through his line figuring out how he's gonna how what line he's gonna take how he's gonna get through the corners uh I, I look for him to at least start in the top five uh no doubt tonight yeah, thanks so much. Uh, now we are going to give all the fans uh, what they've been waiting for. This this is exactly how fans, you can win that free large Domino's pizza. 
It's a large three topping cure head only pizza. All you have to do, fans, is be the first person to accurately predict the winner of this race before halfway. This race, the A main is 40 laps, so halfway will be at lap 20. You can either text 919-883-7497, or if you're watching on your device, you can text in there or type in there in the, in the race chat. I picked this person to win. We've already got a few people made, have already made some picks. So get your picks in as soon as you can. Or if you want to wait before lap 20, it's up to you. But like I said, you can text 919-883-7497. Or you can also comment in the live chat on your device. And hopefully we'll have a brand new winner uh, tonight at the end of the night, Gary. Yeah, it's, it look, it's looking like we might have at least a, a pretty good battle for the lead tonight. There's a lot of fast guys, and, uh, you know, in that last practice, Derek Walker wasn't one of them. I know he's probably just waiting, but uh, I think a good pick for these guys tonight would be Judd Danielson, man. He's He's been fast all night here tonight. He uh, finished that rate, that last race in uh, second, so look for him to uh, to contend for this win. I, I know Judd, he, he drives he drives it in hard. He play, he races dirt pretty much all the time outside of uh, the few Domino's leagues he's in, so look for him to have a really good night tonight. Yeah, I tell you what, Gary, it is going to be interesting. This is a little bit longer of a race than we normally have in our A-Main, so this extra five or ten laps would be really interesting to see who will be able to uh, conquer uh, these track conditions because, Gary, you can explain to the fans real quick. These uh, track conditions do change over that course of a run. Yeah, especially here. There's so much speed in these corners. It's going to be tons of dirt that's that's pushed up the track and into the outside line. And uh, these guys are going to they're going to have their hands full. The straightaway speeds are real high. They're pushing. Uh, let's see here. I'm watching somebody qualify there. It looks like they're pushing about one. 130 almost 140 going into the corners down to 90 miles per hour so there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of wear on the track it's going to get nice and slick lots of guys sliding up the hill uh lots of lots of slide jobs um, and, and and not being able to see out, out the right side of these uh cars with the big wings you know i look for a lot of contact too and we have some guys leave here unhappy tonight but um I, I, I foresee a pretty good race. These guys can race each other pretty clean, and I, and I think uh, I think we're in for a good treat. Yes, sir, Gary. And as far as standings go, in case you're just joining us, fans, Scott Sanderson is number one in the standings. He has the lead of about 22 points over second place Derek Walker, third place Ryan Ahill, fourth Thomas Conheady, uh, fifth we've got uh, – do you have those in front of you? I just lost them. Yeah, the uh, point standings, sorry. We have uh, – At fifth uh, place is where I stopped. Yep, fifth place we have William Davis. Uh, six is Buzz Moore. Ray Richer is seventh. I don't see him in the field tonight, so look for him to drop a few spots. Judd Danielson is eighth. Vernon Markheim is ninth. And Jeremy Crandall is tenth. Thank you there, Gary. In the boots now, we have got our good friend, Russ Co. How you doing tonight, Russ? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Doing great. How does the uh, car feel? How does the track feel? Uh, track feel... Uh, pretty slick. I didn't qualify because, hey, I'm still working on trying to figure this thing out. <laughs> hey, we appreciate it. Uh, good luck tonight. And did want to mention you are the sponsor for our uh, Thursday night Xfinity, Premier Xfinity race at Watkins Glen. Uh, we're looking forward to having uh, your band, Trailer Trash Lot 420. Uh, in the spotlight for that race, it's going to be the Trailer Trash Lot 420 200 at the Glen because we uh, measure the uh, distance on kilometers. It is 50 laps. Uh, so uh, looking forward to having that, and uh, hopefully we get to play some more of your fantastic music during that race. Well, thank you very much, and I'm going to enjoy it because Watkins Glen is definitely my track. I don't know if I'll win, but I want to give them a uh, run for their money, that's for sure. Yes, sir, and we're going to do it the first time in Domino's TYJ Racing History. We're going to have three stages. They're likely to be 10, first 10 laps, stage one. Second 15 lap stage two, and fans, the final stage will probably be the 25 lap finale, making up the 50 laps. It's going to be exciting because we will not be throwing any cautions other than those uh, two in the middle of the race. Uh, good luck tonight, Russ. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Good luck to everybody. All right, Gary, I tell you what, yeah, Russ is a great uh, veteran driver. He's been with Domino's TYJ Racing. Uh, this is uh, his second full season. Uh, obviously, like a lot of these guys, when Dirt came out, uh, he jumped on board. He's never had any real-life dirt racing experience, so it has been a challenge. 
for Russ to get a hold of these dirt cars, but he is doing a, a pretty good job here. Obviously, some of these other guys that are dominating, they've got some real-life experience in dirt cars. Uh, Derek Walker, for sure, I know. Colin Bowden does. Ryan A. Hill does. A lot of these guys have either got go-kart experience or real dirt racing uh, in their past, which is one reason they are so good. Yeah, Robert, I always enjoy racing around Russ in all the series. He, he's definitely a, a student of the sport. He's always learning and always uh, running around you uh, cleanly and look forward to uh, seeing him compete possibly for a win at, at Watkins Glen. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I know there's a lot of guys uh, back there that uh, aren't normally the fastest on the ovals, but they've they've got a few tricks up their sleeve for the road course races. And as far as the dirt goes, yeah, this is – this is a whole new animal for everybody. Even if you've raced in, you know, in dirt in real life, I feel like it definitely translates over to iRacing, but there's still that element of, you know, the way iRacing does dirt and how it separates itself from real life. So when this came out, I think everybody had to kind of reset, calibrate their driving styles and recalibrate their wheels. And uh, it's been a learning curve for everybody, but it's it's chalked up to a pretty awesome little 10 race season for us here um and as the battle closes in tighter um look for this to get even crazier in these last three races as we're about to get the a main underway these guys are gritting and uh, we're going to run through the starting lineup here with uh Derek walker sitting on the pole like we said earlier in practice, I think he was just waiting, letting these guys think they're fast, and he goes out there and puts down another blister of a lap with a 19.537. Uh, Scott Sanderson's going to start second. Uh, Colin Bowden uh, is going to start third. Judd Danielson, with a good qualifying effort, is going to start fourth on the outside. I think that's a good position to be in for him. Rounding out your top five is going to be Ryan Hill. Thomas Conhead, he's going to start sixth. William Roberts Jr. is going to start seventh. William Davis is going to start eighth. Vernon Markheim is going to start ninth. 10th is going to be Ronald Klein. Uh, Jeremy Crandall is going to start 11th. Ivan Garcia is going to start 12th. And uh, we just talked to him. Uh, Russ Coe is going to start 13th. Lucky number 13. Maybe we'll see him have a, a good race tonight. Uh, as he got some TV time. And and uh, we look forward to seeing him try to charge his way up through the field. As the uh, cars start to roll off. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, sorry about that. I was going to do something we don't usually get to do in the dirt races before they take the green is do a quick Domino's driver profile. Uh, Vernon Margam is in that uh, number 33. He is from Greenwood, Indiana. Uh, his sponsors are gtrsimulator.com, indianadiesel.com, Youngs and Sons. He's been in sim racing four years. He's got 20 years in real racing, including hobby stocks, street stocks, uh, Washington State, Yakima Speedway, one hobby stock championship 99 and a demolition derby win in 1995 so it's good to have him in the field he's actually races in all four of our series i'll let you take the uh the green flag here gary thanks a lot yep as they're doubled up for the uh start here of the race they make their way around turn three and four the pace truck's gonna look to dip off here Derek walker chooses the outside line to bring him to the field should be a good line for him to start and look for scott sanderson to get a to get a good start i'm sorry they're on the back stretch now so getting a little bit ahead of myself i'm pretty excited here um, so they make their way down the back stretch now and uh gonna get ready to dive into turn three and four with the pace truck look for him to roll off as i said before Derek walker on the outside scott sanderson's gonna have to time this restart if he's gonna want to get a uh, a good enough jump to keep right with Derek Walker. And Derek Walker gets on the loud pedal and he gets a huge jump on Scott Sanderson. Scott Sanderson caught sleeping. Kyle, Colin Bowden moves up to third place. Uh, Judd Danison's going to be there in fourth. Oh, Judd Danison slides all the way up to the wall and Ryan Hill's going to try to capitalize on that with a uh, move to the bottom. Yes, exactly. Right behind Judd Danielson, it does look like we have Thomas Conhady. He's in that uh, beautiful purple machine. Yeah, and Will Davis all, all over the inside of uh, Thomas Conheady, and now, ooh, Will Davis and Ryan Hill touch again. I know they're probably getting on each other's nerves a little bit, but Will Davis uh, backs it out, and uh, he's going to fall in line behind Thomas Conheady as Will Dav or, uh, Ryan Hill makes his way around Judd Danison, but Judd Danison's going to get a good run off the top, back to the bottom to get back underneath uh, Ryan Hill for third as uh, Judd pulls off a nice pass uh, on the bottom to get up way out in front of uh, Ryan Hill. And these guys get get single file back through sixth place yeah keep on uh, gary i'll be right back in a minute yeah now 
Looks like we've got Will Davis to the inside of Thomas Conheady. Up front, it's all Derek Walker. And it looks like Colin Bowden has gotten around Scott Sanderson. So look for Colin Bowden to move his way up towards Derek Walker as that gap has grown immensely to almost over a second already. Scott Sanderson in third. Judd Danielson still maintaining fourth. Ryan Hill in fifth. And uh, the big battle right here is for sixth place. Will Davis trying to get around Thomas Conhead. He can't get around him on the bottom, so he's going to move up a lane, try to follow in the tire tracks of Thomas Conhead. Look for him to make a move. Uh, I think if Will wants to get around him, he's going to have to get around him on the outside or get a run from the outside and dive it to the bottom. Um, but if he doesn't get around him soon, William Rowe Jr. is closing in on them, and he's going to make this a uh, three-way battle for sixth. And uh, the, the longer they run side by side, the farther the, uh, the top five are going to pull away from them. So I look for, uh, for that battle is pretty good. Let's see if there's anything going on here farther back in the pack. Looks like everything's pretty spread out. The best battle on the, on the track right now, again, is uh, is this battle for sixth with uh, Thomas Conheady, Will Davis, and William Roberts Jr. William Roberts Jr. looks to the inside of Will Davis. They single file. Uh, they get single file again, heading into turns three and four um, as they all start to kind of close in on the back of Judd Danielson. So looking for these guys to all kind of close in here. This might be a, a five-car battle for fourth place as uh, Scott Sanderson's Got a, about a second and a half on Judd Danielson in third. Kyle Bowden's got a second and a half on Scott Sanderson. And a second and a half in front of all them is, of course, Derek Walker. Uh, as they come around, there's still 32 laps remaining. These guys are, these guys are going to be close on fuel. Uh, I'm pretty sure they, they'll have no problem making it, but it's definitely going to be close if, uh, it does, if there isn't a caution. And right now, these guys are nice and spread out, racing really clean. And I, and I, look, for, I look for that to continue as uh, it looks like Thomas Conheady has caught the back of Ryan Hill, so he's going to try to make Ryan Hill's life a little bit more difficult, so that he can move up into the top five. So this battle for the top five is now starting to heat up as the guy, as Will Davis and Wayne Roberts Jr. are closing in the back of him. As Thomas Conheady to the inside of Ryan Hill, he's going to try to slide up off the bottom, and he does, and that's going to allow Will Davis and Wayne Roberts Jr. to close back in on Ryan Hill. So move Thomas Conheady, Conheady up the fifth. Oh, Will Davis in the back of Ryan Hill, and they wreck. Oh, there's a, there's a wreck here. Yes, fans, we'll get the replay pulled up here in just a minute. It looks like the 11 and the 55 got together there. Yeah, it looks yeah, what did you say, Gary? Go ahead. Yeah, so it looks <laughs> – these guys are getting a little bit uh, a little bit aggravated with each other. I, uh, again, it's – Ryan Hill, Will Davis get together. They got together in the B main, but from from my vantage point here, it looks like Will Davis had a good run off the uh, off turn turn three, and he dove it in there. Uh, Will Davis dove it in pretty hard. Uh, he, he maintained his line. Ryan Hill maintained his line. I think he's just. I don't think Will really anticipated how quick he was uh, he was closing in on the back of Ryan Hill and. I understand. Yeah, it is kind of it is kind of strange that, that, that Ryan slowed down that much, but uh, you know, Will was Will was just dove it in there, and uh, it wasn't a slide job or anything like that. It's just I think I think it was a matter of you know the reaction time in these sprint cars is so hard to tell how, how quickly you close in on cars sometimes, and if they just get a little bit of a run that's not too. That's a little bit slower than, than the car behind them. It's really hard for the car behind to, to really m make a move to, to try to avoid that other car. And he just got in the back of Ryan Hill. I hate to see that for for Ryan, but uh, that's uh, sometimes how it goes in dirt racing. And unfortunately, Will Will Roberts Jr. is uh, the biggest victim of that wreck as he gets, he gets flipped over in the aftermath. Yeah, it looks like uh, both of those uh, vehicles had a little bit of damage. Also got William Roberts Jr. involved. Unfortunately, you probably already went over that, Gary. Sorry about that. I'll let you take us on this replay. A restart, excuse me. Yeah, as they, they're single file here again. Uh, look for these guys to try to get a, a better restart on Derek Walker as uh, they make their way around the corner. Pace truck's going to dive in uh, onto pit road and 
Derek Walker is going to try to get a better restart. Look for him to kind of slow him down. And he gets on the pedal. Thomas Conhead, he does not go at all. And Scott Sanderson gets in the back of him, and that's going to allow Judd Danielson to be right there to pounce for third place. Yeah, it looks like it's the uh, 20 of Colin Bell that's got that bad restart. And Scott Sanderson right on the back of him. Uh, Scott Sanderson's making a move on the inside of the 20 of Colin Bell. Uh, trying to get around there side by side in the corner. And this is definitely let Derek Walker get away. Yeah, as that battle for second place is heating up pretty good. And it looks like, oh, Scott Sanderson gets into the back of Colin Bowden as the caution comes out behind them. Yes, we will definitely pull that replay up here in just a minute, fans. It looks like it was the 193. And it's also the 20 of Colin Bowden got together there. Yeah, it looks like the caution is for Ivan Garcia. He uh, had, had a self-spin coming out of three and four, got in the real slick stuff on the bottom, got his left tires in the grass and just looped it around here and park it right in victory lane, but unfortunately hit the wall. And I don't think he's going to actually be parking it there tonight. Um, but that's that was the, uh, the caution. Go ahead, gear up, be right back. Yeah, no worries, and uh, we got 23 laps remaining. Derek Walker is in first, Colin Bowden in second, Scott Sanderson in third, Judd Danison in fourth, uh, Thomas Conheady in fifth, and uh, Will Davis in sixth, Ryan Hill in seventh, eighth is Ronald Klein, ninth is Werner Markheim, tenth Jeremy Crandall, eleventh is Russ Cove, twelfth is Ivan Garcia, and thirteenth. William Roberts Jr. and it appears that Ivan Garcia and William Roberts both have retired from this race. Left with 11 guys out here. Uh, Derek Walker again, class of the field. Cobb Bowden has been able to maintain once the gap has been made, but these guys really, I, 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 week in and week out, I'm, I'm still amazed that they haven't figured out how to restart better. I know that Derek Walker is in control of the field, but there's a lot that that Colin Bowden could be doing to uh, to anticipate this start a little bit better by getting a little bit closer to Derek and just and just uh, you know getting on the gas a little bit sooner and trying to get going. As it appears. Yeah, we're about to uh, beat 22. We're gonna get the restart here with it looks like 21 laps to go. So you, get, you got one more lap to get your pick picks in for the uh, for the pizza as the pace trap pulls in. Derek Walker, another big jump. Comp out, not a good jump at all. Scott Sanderson gets to his outside. Uh, they maintain a little bit of a gap on Derek Walker, but Derek Walker's gonna start pulling away down the back stretch. Scott's or Comp out has a mirror fool. Scott Sanderson. Uh, Judd Danielson has a mirror fool of Thomas Conheady and Will, and Will Davis as Will Davis looks to the inside of uh, Scott Sanderson, or I'm sorry, uh, Thomas Conheady and uh, Ryan Ryan Hill dives to the bottom of all of them. <laughs> he almost passes three cars in that corner, but coming up off the bottom, he wa he washes up a little bit. Can only get to the even with Thomas Conheady as uh, he looks to slide up in front of Thomas Conheady. He does right. In Pulls up just barely right in front of, of Con Hedy and see how he looks to set his sights on Will Davis as uh, up front, still all Derek Walker. Yeah, that was an amazing move by uh, Ryan A. Hill in that 55. He definitely looked like he was going to pass three at one time. He got one and then the other, and now it looks like uh, William Davis in that 11 is trying to make another move. I tell you what, Gary, it's amazing to me how it all depends on what kind of line you take into these corners and coming off the corner as to what kind of momentum you get for that lap. Yeah, since these guys are pretty much all wide open, it, it's really, really, really all, a, a big chess match. It's almost like restrictor plates on dirt, uh, a little bit more spread out. But, it, you know, if you take the wrong line, your engine will get bogged down coming off the corners. And the other guys on the, you know, that got the better line through is going to get a huge run on the outside. So um, it, it is pretty cool to see how these guys maneuver their way through it. But uh, at the end of the day, Derek Walker's got this thing figured out. If I were these guys, I'd be, I'd be asking him what the secret is. Yeah, I don't think he's uh, his main secret, and I'm pretty sure this is accurate. 
he spends a lot of time on the dirt here getting practice on all these tracks. I would venture to say he probably puts in quite quite a, quite more time, uh, kind of like we've got some drivers in on the asphalt series there here. You know them that are very, very, very talented. Uh, they win a lot of races, and I know for a fact it's because they put in a lot of seat time, and that's what it takes to be this good in any of these competitive series. Yes, sir, Robert. It definitely does. Uh, it looks like uh, the 193 of Scott Sanderson has completed the pass on Colin Bowden. And that's for that second position. See if Scott Sanderson and the 193 can set his sights on Derek Walker and catch him here. But we do have about 13 laps to go. Yeah, and that's that was a nice move that Scott Sanderson pulled on Colin Bowden. Now he's got about two. He's got a two-second gap to make up. But uh, you know, if, if Derek Walker makes a mistake, we've seen him make a mistake before. Before he went on that five. Uh, race streak. He, he had a he had one race where he started on the pole and ended up wrecking on the second lap. So he can he has made mistakes. So I think in order for Scott Sanderson to get up there, he's going to need a caution or a mistake. As uh, the battle uh, the battles back here, I'm trying to see if there's any real intense battles going on in the middle of the pack. It looks like Will Davis and uh, Thomas Conheady are the closest battle going on in the track right now. Everyone else is pretty much spread out. So that battle for for uh, six is, is heating up. Uh, everywhere else, we've got, we got some big gaps all around. Yeah, i tell you what, William Davis and that number 11 have been trying to get around Thomas Conheady. Uh, it seems like for the last three, four laps, they're running almost at the identical line around this track, uh, kind of to the high groove, diving it down. It looks like William Davis is a little bit higher groove this time. See if he can get a better run off the corner. As I know this track is definitely... Uh, not rubbered in, but whatever you call it, uh, Gary, when the strike gets a lot of laps on it. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, I guess you call it worn out. There's a nice defined cushion on the outside that uh, Will Davis is trying to get his back right tire in just to get a little bit more grip around the top. Uh, it's a longer way around the track, so through the corners, the bottom, the, the, the lower line is going to get around faster, but you're not going to get as big as a run off the corner. It's, uh, it looks like Ryan Hill and Judd Danielson, they've heated up their battle for fourth place quite a bit. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, Judd Danielson is uh, all over the back end of that number 55 of Ryan Hill. This is a big improvement for Judd. I know uh, personally, as a fact, he's put in a lot of time practicing this week at this track for this race. And it is showing up, showing its true colors. Uh, practice always pays. Yeah, now that's heating up for third place. So this is for a podium spot and a chance at a little bit of an interview here at the end of the race. Uh, they've both closed in on the back of Colin Bowden. And this race is really heating up with seven laps to go. Ryan Hill dives it to the bottom. Judd Danielson dives it to the bottom. Judd Danielson pulls even with uh, Colin Bowden. And uh, Ryan Hill pulls up in front of Colin Bowden. Judd Danielson now to the bottom of, of Colin Bowden. Ryan Hill's up to third. Judd Danielson gets a little bit loose on the bottom. He's going to have to dive to the bottom and Ryan Hill's up to third Judd Danielson still working his way around the bottom he's got it move, he's got it working pretty good on the bottom so he moves up to fourth look for Judd to try to now get back up to Ryan Hill and try to get around him yeah I tell you what these guys from what I understand they are all going to be really close on fuel here tonight uh, we're on lap 36 got about uh, 14 13 to go F five laps to go right? yeah my bad five laps to go as they do have 40 laps total and I've heard from quite a few of them they're going to have to start saving if they want to get all the way around on the final lap a little bit more strategy we threw in here making it 40 laps tonight fans and hopefully you're getting your money's worth yeah and Judd Danielson dives it to the bottom of Ryan Hill for third place it gets a good move good slide job on him it looks like Ryan Hill might be saving fuel right now I tell you what, Derek Walker is definitely saving fuel. His last lap was a 21 some odd second. Scott Sanderson has got a great big run. Scott Sanderson has caught the 0-2 of Derek Walker. Yeah, Scott Sanderson's all over the back of Derek Walker, so Derek's definitely saving fuel. And Scott Sanderson's going to easily move around to the outside, so now Scott Sanderson saved enough fuel to make it to the end. As they're going to come around and get two laps to go, Derek Walker now falls back to second. John Dan move John Danielson up to third. So if Scott Sanderson runs out, Judd Danielson can move up to first. Yeah, I tell you what, these guys uh, were definitely... Oh, it looks like Scott Sanderson's shaking his vehicle. I think he's out. Yeah, Scott Sanderson's out of fuel. It's looking like Derek Walker's going to come back around. All right, man. Oh, and the caution's out. Yeah, it looks like Derek Walker is slow on the track. Oh, so the caution is out.
It looks like Judd Danielson's going to move up to first as they took the white flag. Now, Judd Danielson looks like he's out of fuel. Yeah, it looks like Colin Bowden. But maybe Judd might have just been slowing down. Judd okay. might have been slowing down for the, uh, the pace truck. Yeah. They're going to be coming around. Man, that was intense. Uh, you don't usually see these sprint car races uh, have, have have fuel strategy come into play, but uh, 40 laps here is a, is, it's a big track, you know, and, and they could make it if they if they if they saved fuel enough and worked on it, and uh, definitely shook up the field. But it still looks like as long as De Derek Walker will still get the win as they just finished. Judd Danielson's going to finish second. Ryan Hill's going to finish third. Thomas Conheady in fourth, Colin Bowden in fifth, Ronald Klein sixth, Vernon Markheim is going to be seventh, Russ Coe is going to be eighth, Scott Sanderson, we saw him run out of fuel, he's going to finish ninth, uh, Jeremy Crandall is going to finish tenth, Will Davis eleventh, twelfth is Ivan Garcia, thirteenth is William Roberts Jr. Yeah, thank you so much. Gotcha. Thank you so much there, Gary. We are going to get the title here for a quick interview. That was the most exciting win we've had here. That's exciting. Yeah, that was that was pretty crazy for a dirt race. I wasn't expecting that tonight. I wasn't expecting fuel to come into play. It's really cool to see that. I hope the fans enjoyed that. Um, caution came out there at the end because it looks like uh, Scott Sanderson, when he ran out of gas, he couldn't make it around. So the caution came out. There wasn't a wreck. Uh, so this is, this is how it played out. And... Derek Walker gets the win. Judd Danielson second. Ryan Hill third. Yeah, I tell you what, it looks like this is going to be exciting. We're going to pull these guys up here in just a second. And uh, was that strategy exciting for you there, Gary? Were you expecting that or what? No, I was just telling the fans that I was not expecting that at all. And to see that come into play with five laps to go, it really amped things up. And if that would have stayed green, uh, I don't know what would have happened. It, you know. I think you know, Ryan or Judd, they looked like they were saving gas pretty well, and they could have made it, and uh, Derek Walker may have ran out. So, But the caution came out, and that's how that's how it goes sometimes. And Interesting. Yeah, I'll tell you what, now we're going to – looks like we've got a chance to interview our third-place finisher, Ryan Hill. This is Robert and Gary up in the booth. Uh, congratulations on third place. I understand you had enough fuel there to make it to the end. Unfortunately, the caution came out. Uh, tell us about your race. Yeah, I had enough fuel. I, from the moment the green flag and from the get-go, me and Colin started playing fuel strategy. He backed off from the start of the race. I started backing off. That's why I fell so far back. And from then on, it was fuel saving, and then the cautions came out, which kind of hurt us a little bit. Made a couple good passes getting to the top five. Made a good pass to get into fourth from, on Colin. In the last five laps, I was going. Uh, Judd went went around me. I let him go, and he started saving. I was about to get around him. And whatever caused the caution, it ruined my chances of a win. So, you can yeah, take what you can take, I guess. Yeah, I know that's very disappointing. I hear it in your voice, and uh, I tell you what, sometimes you win them. Not often in dirt on fuel mileage, and sometimes you lose them. But uh, we definitely threw a little, whatever you want to call it in there, a little not a trick, but a horseshoe. Uh, and some of you guys noticed it early on the beginning of the race. The 40 laps would be close on fuel. Some of you didn't. Uh, obviously, if we had gone green, I believe you, you would have won that race. Uh, congratulations, Ryan. I'm sure you're going to gain some points there, uh, at least on the top two. And we'll definitely talk to you later this week. Have a good 4th of July. All right. Thank you. You all have a good one and happy Independence Day to everybody. One last thing, Ryan. Uh, who would you like to thank? My bad for forgetting to ask you that. Oh, good. Well, obviously, I thank yourself for putting on the league and allowing me to run in two of the series. Gary, for helping you in the booth today. And, of course, Michael D'Amico for making it all happen on TV or on stream. And my sponsors, Craftsman and Sears. Oh, hey, everybody at DBR, sorry. Uh, I won't be racing this week because it's the Xfinity Series. But they're doing a big Dylan Brockwell race at Capital City. I like real-life racing for go-karts. And the purse is, I think, up towards... 3500 to win, I think, something like that. So good luck to everybody out there. Yes, sir, I heard about that, and I uh, wish I could make the trip up there. I'll definitely be thinking about you guys. You have a great time, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And, Gary, it looks like we have caught it with our second-place finisher. Gary, if you will interview Judd Danielson. 
Yeah, we're here in the booth with uh, Judd Danielson. Comes in second there. Uh, Judd, we saw uh, we we saw some heated battles between you and Ryan Hill, and then you know we saw fuel strategy come into play. Were you expecting that tonight? And uh, if you were, uh, you did a good job at hiding it from people. And and do you think you had enough to make it to the end if it would have stayed green? Well, I let Ryan. I let him around. Um, I didn't know. I, honestly, I, I didn't know we were going to have to save. And I checked my fuel, and I'm like, whoa, I'm going to be a lap short here. So when everybody started kind of talking about it, I'm like, geez, now what do I do? So I just try to get around Ryan one more time and just kind of see what he was going to do. And he definitely backed off. And so it allowed me to conserve a little bit. But uh, at the end of the night, I still – if I'd have kept it wide open, it was I was in trouble. So you know, the second place uh, I wasn't a second place car tonight for sure, but I'll take it in a sense. Um, I worked hard. I got some equipment fixed this weekend, so uh, it definitely showed up at the track. I felt pretty good here at USA. So uh, overall, you know, it was a pretty good run for me. I was confident, but you know, I feel sorry for the guys that uh, and, and myself. A sense, you know, we really didn't know. I knew Robert. You know, he said some things earlier in the series that he was going to kind of change things up. But I don't think any of us were expecting to have to nurse these things. Uh, they're really difficult to drive when you're not on the throttle, as you know, Gary. Yeah, it's definitely a, uh, a, a wrench that was thrown into it. And, and, and it definitely made for an exciting uh, race up here in the booth. I, I can't imagine what you guys had to go through to, to, to keep those cars under control and also save fuel. But it was, it was nice seeing you running up in the top five all night in uh, both the B and A main um, the hard work just definitely pays off. And, uh, is there anyone you'd like to thank for your win tonight? Oh yeah, for sure. Domino's, um, you know, renegade series. I, I really love running the dirt tracks. Um, for some reason it just, it just works for my, my, my nature of the way I drive. Uh, I don't have to worry so much about burning my tires up, but again, you do have to learn how to drive these things. Uh, it's not as easy as you think. The stagger really puts a lot of, uh, you know, it puts a wrench no pun intended, you know, in, in your setups where you, you have to be careful as to, you know, how much turning you're making and, and you can scrub off a lot of speed. So the guys up front, you know, that's a different caliber of boys up there, man. I can tell you that right now. I just feel, uh, I feel really blessed that I was able to get up there and run with them tonight. And, you know, I had a couple words with Scott and Derek and Ryan before the race. And uh, I was just going to get out of the way if I had to, but I mean, I wasn't going to let up. I was racing them. Yeah, Judd. And, Again, an awesome race tonight. Glad to see you in the top three. Uh, maybe you can close in on the gap on some of these points and get yourself into the top five before the season's over. So good race tonight, and uh, we'll see you uh, this Wednesday in the Truck Series. Yeah, 10-4. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Judd. Now we have up here. Down, actually, uh, Gary has caught up with our winner in Victory Circle. Uh, Gary, go ahead. Six in a row for Derek Walker. Uh, fuel strategy came into play tonight. We saw you with a huge lead, and then that lead just diminished quickly. You lost the lead, but you had enough fuel to make it to the end. Do you think if the caution when it came out, you actually would have made it to the end? Uh, yeah, I was uh, I was unaware of the fuel being even a, a, a problem tonight. I, I did not plan for that at all, but luckily uh, the lead that I – had built up allowed me to pretty much coast for a couple laps and as, as fast as I saw Scott going there at the end I didn't think he was gonna be able to make it staying that you know giving it that much throttle but so I just let him go by and I was just waiting for Ryan to get up to me before I got back on it I think I would have made it, uh, it but but I probably would have ran out right at the line yeah well doesn't matter if fuel's a, an issue or just going fast is an issue. You you still found yourself in the uh, winter circle tonight, and you know that's a testament of uh, how it is out there for you. And and we were just talking to, your, to second place finisher Judd Danison, and you know he ex was explaining how hard it is to kind of nurse these cars because you kind of have to drive them at their limit for them to handle the best. So um, was that difficult for you to when you started saving fuel to keep the car, you know? Uh, all, from drifting down to the inside, we know they like to pull the left when they're going a little bit slower. Yeah, these are a lot harder to drive uh, at a slower pace, which you wouldn't think it would be. It's, they're much easier when you're full throttle. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Luckily, the track was slick, so going slow, you are better off just getting in the slick because it kind of helped it come around and turn for you. Otherwise, I would have been bouncing off the walls like a pinball. So, uh, yeah, I think it was a little tougher, but I was just looking in my mirror watching and waiting for, for them to come up to me before I got back on it. 
Yeah, that's awesome. But it was a good run for you tonight. And uh, is there anyone you'd like to thank for your uh, for your win tonight? Uh, yeah, I just thank all my Twitch viewers at the Dirty Dude Twitch channel. They support me every week. They're in here right now watching. So a uh, big shout out to them. A shout out to uh, Robert. He does an amazing job with the league. Uh, and then to you guys at All Pro, you do a great job every week. I love going back and watching the broadcast. It's always entertaining. So shout out to you guys. And then my teammate who wasn't able to make it here, Nathan Davis, he wasn't able to make it tonight. And John Batista, they weren't here either. Uh, so uh, I think that's about it. Shout out to my dad and sister if they're watching. And uh, look forward to next week. Thanks, Derek. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you next week. You may have gotten the points lead after tonight, or it's definitely going to be close. Uh, so with two races to go, uh, we look for you to make a run at that championship. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks again, Derek. Have a great 4th of July. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, you too, Robert. All right, Gary, that was really exciting. We do have a free pizza winner. Uh, Susan Jenkins from Columbia, South Carolina picked Derek uh, kind of early on. Uh, we had a couple of guys uh, who made picks, and three minutes later they'd pick a different racer, uh, and then they'd go back and pick the first guy they picked. Uh, so, so fans, just so you know, you get one pick before lap uh, 20 in this race or halfway of any of the races we do. Obviously, if you pick two, three different drivers, um, you know, that's not fair to the people that just pick one. So Susan picked uh, Derek early on. Uh, she will be receiving that free large uh, three-topping Domino's pizza. Gary, what are your takeaways from tonight? Well, I think the biggest takeaway everyone uh, will probably agree is the uh, fuel strategy. Um, it seemed like no one in the field was expecting that. Uh, I heard the amount of laps earlier. You had texted me that you said it was going to be 40 laps. And at first, I didn't think anything of it. And then as I was thinking about it, I was like, okay, 40 laps. And then I know I had mentioned something earlier in the broadcast about fuel possibly coming into play. I thought I thought maybe it wouldn't, but it, it ended up coming hugely into play and uh almost uh changed the outcome of who won the race but it uh definitely hurt some guys and helped some guys that were paying attention to it and that's all part of racing you know sometimes you have to you have to be mindful of the things that are going on in your car uh including the fuel gauge and uh i think that's the biggest takeaway from tonight was the racing was really good and nice and spread out not a lot of wrecks but at the end of the day the uh the fuel came into play yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And I tell you what, um, these guys might not have been used to that, but with three races to go, uh, the fans want to see an exciting race. They want to see some kind of strategy. Uh, we did have the same winner that's won the last few races, Derek Walker. So he was able to figure the strategy out kind of on the go. And we had a couple other drivers who were saving from the beginning, like uh, Ryan Hill said he was. So it's going to be interesting for the next two races, fans. You don't want to miss them. You never know what I'm going to give these drivers as a – What's the word I'm looking for, Gary? Not a road court, not a road, um, not able to call it, not a detour, a challenge. Maybe a new challenge is a good word for these guys to overcome uh, to get these wins because uh, we don't want to make it easy for them. But I appreciate you being here, Gary. Ever, also appreciate Michael D'Amico with All Pro Broadcasting. Again, fans, make sure you click the subscribe button there. Uh, you were watching the Domino's TYJ Racing Renegade Dirt Series Summer Nationals uh, brought to you by Cross Continent Racing. Uh, Gary, thanks for being here. All of you have a very happy and safe 4th of July. Make sure if you have a few too many, you call a cab, you call Uber, you have a, a sober family member drive you around. We don't want to lose any of you fans. You're very important to us. Have a great 4th of July, and we will see you hopefully Wednesday night, 8.50 p.m. Eastern for the Kentucky Trucks. Uh, it's going to be an exciting race. Talk to you then.